Welcome to today's EMBN show. Adam is back for a fourth sitting. On today's show, we've got good bikes, we've got bad bikes, and we've got a surprise, which even Adam doesn't know about. Tell me more, tell me more. Surprise? Yes, a surprise. Literally just got it through on my email. Uh, we'll come back to that in a minute. Uh, Adam, news. Let's go with the news this week. Let's have a look into some of the good and bad in the world of e-mountain bikes. Oh, so, yes. First and foremost, Cartec, uh, a brand that maybe not all of you have heard of, have come out with their new 160 e-bike, the e-Power RS 160 Factory. I'm a big fan of Coratec. I, do, I think they make cool bikes. Uh, I'm glad to see they've now got the smart system bike. They have a 750 watt hour battery. And of course, the mini remote display on it. I think it does make a difference for a lot of people. I agree. I think it's a really clean look. I think, to be honest, it's, it's my kind of bike. It's not. It is. It is your kind Mixed of wheel set, yeah. 160 front and rear. Yeah, good angles. Geometry, yeah, a, a the, little conservative, I'd say. The only thing I would say about this good bike is possibly the weight 160 mil travel bike at 26 and a half kilos in size large yeah it's a little bit on the tubby side right next up adam nareka now we've seen nareka on embn show many many times in the past five years uh, not a new brand uh, i think they've got a lot of things going for them i think the power on this bike uh, abs braking the price two thousand pounds i think uh, and also the motor, fantastic motor, got the Bafang uh, M620 motor on here. 140 mil travel, front and rear, it's a carbon frame. However, 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 this is the big however. It does weigh 31 kilograms. Um, but a lot of that's probably in the tires, right? <laughs> It's a fat bike. It's a fat bike. Yeah. Do you think so? I, I, I call it well, two kilos per tyler. Well, there's another however as well. However, it's a fat bike. Yes. Um, and um, geometry. I mean, I have never in my whole mountain bike experience seen a bike with a chain stay of 502 millimeters. Oh, it's banging, isn't it? That is, that is, that's a big old boy there. Um, um, questionable reach numbers. It's not, I think the reach isn't too bad. 465 size large? Yeah, 462 the, in a size large. The problem, Adam, is you've got a bike which has got, it is, honestly, got a genuinely fantastic motor. Uh, you've got a 640 watt hour battery on here. Um, it's got travel, it's got carbon. Carbon, I'm neither here this way or that. But the fact is 38 miles per hour. Where on earth are you going to be able to ride this bike? I, yeah. With questionable geometry. I, Very I, questionable geometry. I want to, I want to put the, put some facts down on that because is that that's is that on the roads is that off-road what's the intention again Ad, adam 38 is 38 whether you're riding it on the moon as simple as that if you're riding in alaska <laughs> you're probably not going to have any problems with it let's let these guys think guys what do you think of the nareka bike uh I, i'm not with you know i'm not there actually some news adam some news some news give me that wheel come now on, uh, folks uh, a lot of you commented on what e-bike wheels to get we, you might have seen the video we had on the channel on the weekend about uh, proper e-bike specific, e-bike fully... What to upgrade to, right? I think wheels are a great upgrade for an e-bike. Now you can see the asymmetry on this wheel. Now this is the uh, this is the 40 mil version of the HTZ from WTB. Didn't mention it's WTB. Now there's a ton of features on this. I mean, obviously there's the the steel free hub, there's the six point engagement, there's the heat sink on the disc, which is quite interesting. That is very interesting. But I think, obviously there's the, the huge bearings on here. What, they, what they've done with these wheels, if they're just simply, and they're, they're not shy to say this, they've simply made a mountain bike wheel stronger. Yeah. That's all, and it's basic, right? It's all we've been crying out for. It's something I've, exactly. I've really wanted to find and nail. Part of the reason I brought this wheel in, Adam, was to ask you about your thoughts on 40 mil rim with a 2.8. This is only this is a rear specific wheel. 40 mil rim with a 2.8. I like the idea of that. At a glance, it's funny you should say that. It doesn't look as big as a normal 2.8 on a narrow rim. And I think it squares up the profile, mm -hmm. but it looks awesome. It I, does. I'm, a, I'm a fan of a, a so, wide rim. Do you know what I'm gonna do? Grip. I'm gonna get that on your uh, on your torque when it arrives and so you can try that out. Looking forward to it. Uh, right, more news. Uh, oh, there's news about Petter Solberg, the famous Petter Solberg has got an e-bike, uh, MMMR bikes. Uh, that's the three-time FIA world, uh, what do you call it? 
car rally. Yeah, car rally, rally, rally driver. Car Come rally on, he is the man, the myth, the legend. Yeah. In the wonderful monster colours. Do, uh, do, oh, do okay. like a green. Right. I'm not into drinks like that. But anyway, that's another conversation. Uh, Adam, the big news. I think this is one of the big pieces of news this week. Uh, Lidl has discounted Zundap bikes in their stores. Now, I actually know Zundap from, from motocross days back in the 19... 40s and 50s, no, it's 70s and 80s. Uh, <laughs> We're talking I think about age a lot this show, aren't we? <laughs> it's the age show this week, along with the good and bad and the surprise. Don't I'm forget for it. to tell it's me like a surprise. Cake. Hey, let's quickly go through this Ananda. Sorry, not the Ananda, the Zundap. Yes. Zundap's got an Ananda, an Ananda herb on it. The weight is good, the price is good. We're looking at um, 1,186 euros. Insane. Again, I mean, price, is, price is king. So, geometry's pretty good on it. I mean, weight 22.5 kilos, 250 watt hour bat, uh, rear hub, 504 watt hour battery. I'm trying to think what is bad about this bike, and I cannot think of anything that is bad about this bike. No, I mean. A thousand euros! Insane. I, yeah, you can't knock it. And again, it's the weight that goes with that. You know, a Isn't 22 it? kilo bike yeah. with a hub driven motor. We, we talked about 8,000 pound bikes here, which were 26 kilos. We've talked about 16,000 pound bikes. <laughs> Again, we won't go into the, that the, now. The thing is, right, is that um, my friend, best friend, his his girlfriend, sorry, his wife just bought a new new e bike. And so he's she, just going to say he's bought a new wife. <laughs> sorry, she's <laughs> bought. Like, come on, stop it. This is. Uh, See, she's concerned. She's gone from a hardtail to a full suspension bike, and she feels it's a little bit heavy, but it's just all relative. She just needs to get used to it, I think. But anyway, wait aside. The big, exciting news! Surprise! Go on. Nobody in this room knows about this surprise news. I'm, I'm dead keen. Are you ready? Yeah. Go on, go on, go on, go on. Specialized have just brought out a Levo SL for kids. No way. This reminds me of the <laughs> carbon balance bike. Oh, this is hot news for all of you guys Nick? there. Nick? Like you like that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I've never done surprise news on the EMBN show since it started. And genuinely, you've caught me on the back foot. I have not a clue. What, what are we talking? Any details? Any George sizes? George Leslie, you're a freaking legend. Thanks for sending that in. Uh, we got any? We got any sneak peeks? Any info? We have because it's all on screen now. There this one go. we got is it's all range. It's got great geometry in it. It's all kind of. It's all about the kids. Got to say one thing. Um, spoil the party. You got a kids under fourteen aren't allowed to ride them on trails but you can ride them on your mate's farmland you can ride them in my garden you can ride them in adam's garden you can ride them in nick's garden you, you can ride them in nick's garden. flat in nick's flat look at that <laughs> that'd be a, but that'd... that's that's uk specific right it's the it's the wattage on the motor that's the legal side of yeah. things right so do you know yeah. what i think it's great news Do there's a can you imagine having an can you imagine having an e-bike as a kid it's... oh my it's there you go, folks. Let's know your uh, comments on this week's news. Let's hear from you guys. Let's see what you guys have to say about some of the things that Steve and me have been up to. Yeah. Steve and I. What really. about this one, Adam? Starting off from um, San uh, Tetsugaku. The question is, where's the need this address is? More to break, more to pay for, and why? This is a you question. You had hands on. Is it coming down to being able to ride up a hill with I'm, both your hands free? <laughs> well, it could be. As part of a I need. think, right, I think, um, San, I think there's, I think there's multiple, uh, multiple needs that this addresses. I think, I'm gonna just give you one, actually. I'm gonna give you one. And I think, um, what I've noticed from my time riding e-mounted bikes is people get on them and I would say 80% of people that get on e-bikes for the first few months do not understand the relationship between cadence and power from motor. I think with the auto shift, uh, that does it all for you. It takes the thinking of cadence out of your hands and it just gives you the right amount of power for your e-mounted bike. So I think just from a beginner level, let's not, don't worry about the, the high end kind of skills which which it um, addresses. I think just that beginner level, it's, it tackles that. That's so, a really valid point. So I'm gonna leave it at that. And I think it address, that, that, that umbrella's a lot of different topics. It does. I think that's a, that's a very, very well-rounded answer. So, I mean, I, you know, I think we'll, do you know, I think we'll revisit that question. It's a great question, San. I think we'll revisit it, because obviously, I, from my point of view, I think order shift addresses, and I wasn't gonna do a second answer, but it addresses 
the ability to climb technical terrain without having to fiddle with the shift there. Focus on your line choice, focus with your, with your, with your flow. I think that one will help. So yeah, got, you've got two answers in out of, out of, out of me for and that. Arguably, maybe it's choosing better options than you are. Not I think you so. specifically, think so. probably me. What? No, me, it does, it does. Uh, another question here from Jose PB. Uh, wants to know about e-bike specific seats and, and, and are, do they actually, again, where's the need for that? Do you know what, funnily enough? I was about to grab that. You've, that, you've taken this. over. Did you see this? It's WTB's seat. With a, with a whole, I think it's a cool design. You, it's there to help you lift e-bikes. To but stop you know, your kids riding off is another great, great use of Or that. to actually get a toe on an e-bike too, didn't <laughs> think of that. Go. Do you know what? I, I, I try as much as possible not to go lifting my e-mountain bike, but the whole business of seats, Adam. Actually, Adam has gone into detail about uh, the needs of an e-bike seat. There's a few good reasons why having the right saddle is key when you're riding your e-mountain bike. And Reason being is say, for example, on the climbs, you're probably gonna be sat down a hell of a lot more on your e-bike, probably about 90% of the time on some of those steeper, techier climbs. And with the added weight and the added motor power, you get your best traction when your weight is planted on the back of the bike. Another reason is to ensure that you don't get your dreaded wheel spin or the wheelie on the front end. And in order to get the right saddle, you have to focus on a few different things. So we're going to look into the anatomy of a saddle and what aids you in comfort, control and efficiency. So first things first, it is super important to make sure that your saddle is positioned correctly on your bike because if you had a saddle like that or a saddle like that, it's not going to be comfortable. But what it comes down to is also determined by the type of bike you ride. So for example, hardtail riders, you are going to be in a slightly more upright position. You're going to be sat on the saddle a little bit longer. You're going to want all the cushion you can get without having as a rear suspension essentially. With the saddle that you have on the hardtails is you go for a slightly wider platform, something that's a little bit more cushioned and slightly wider nose to give you support when you are doing those steeper climbs. So for you full suspension riders out there, if you're a gravity-based full suspension rider, then having a saddle is important, but less so. You want something that's not gonna to be too grippy, something you can get out of the way because you're gonna be doing big jumps and you're gonna be doing stuff like nice corners and berms. Again, it's mainly making sure that the saddle can stay out of the way. However, on say a trail e-mountain bike, you're gonna to need to have something that's a little bit more refined, something that's a little bit more specific to your needs. What you need to have is something that's gonna give you a good amount of traction and weight to be sat on the back. So a nice ramp up on the back there. You're gonna to need to have something that's not gonna to be too grippy so you can maneuver around the saddle and you're gonna need something that's gonna have a bit more of a sort of deeper channel so that nothing's pinching, nothing's going where it shouldn't be. So it's all good and well, slapping the name Eaton Mountain Bike on certain components, especially saddles, but what does it really mean? There's really key features that have been put into saddles that help with your e-bike riding. So I've got the lovely Ergon Core Prime Team e-bike specific saddle with me here, and we're gonna kind of dissect the anatomy of an e-bike saddle and what difference it makes and why. So the ramp on the back of the saddle is what you think it does. If you're going up something steeper and more technical, it's gonna catch your bum on the back end of the saddle, giving you a lot more comfort and stability on some of those steeper climbs. Next up, we have a wider nose. Now the wider nose is a bigger platform when you're in more of those extreme positions. Kissing the stem, it's gonna make sure that you're feeling that comfort and you're gonna have a bit of control in between your legs. So next up is making sure that your sit bones are in the correct position. So the meat of the saddle, the two bigger cushion parts is where most of your pressure is gonna be at. Now, you need to make sure that there's a bit of flex side to side to give you natural movement when maneuvering your hips back and forth on some of those technical steeper climbs. Now Ergon use something that's really cool. They have something called an elastic core, which gives you some damping properties. So for you hardtail riders, this is a great feature without having any rear suspension. Elastic core uses thousands of foam particles to give you additional small bump sensitivity and twin shell setup. It has another layer of support within the cushion and the base of the saddle. This allows for a little bit more flexibility and maneuverability and stops as much of the harsh feeling you'd get from a hard plastic base. 
They also offer a mix of support foam and gel in all the right places. Now, that's paired with a really durable microfiber material to stop the wear and friction on the top of the saddle. This is going to help the comfort over your longer rides. It's going to make sure that your most sensitive and harder areas on your rear end are protected and comfortable. Men's and women's health is probably one of the most important topics when it comes to talking about saddles. Ergon have been really clever in the way they've designed their saddles. They have an ergonomic channel that runs through the center. Now, this will vary depending on whether you're male or female. There's no Ken or Barbie dolls in this situation. Um, and it also vary dependent on the type of saddle you choose, which comes down to the style of riding you're doing. With the channel, it will vary in shape or size depending on how far you lent forwards or how upright you are. So understanding the anatomy of a saddle is key because it's arguably one of your two most important contact points and to make sure that you're going to be sat comfortably for those longer rides and where you're going to be sat on the saddle more often it's really important to make sure that you find the saddle that fits your body shape. Adam that was I think that's that addressed that question pretty in depth nicely yeah. for that. Do you know what this seat I think you could do with a bit of a kick on the tail. I like I like a scoop. I like a little yeah, hook. There you go, guys. Uh, $59.99 or $120.65. Made those numbers up. Uh, next question <laughs> is from uh, Ian, Ian Harding. Harding. Uh, so, oh, this this is another one on the on the drive on the on the uh, auto shift. I like it. However, the question is, how long will the drive last? Well, it's very simple, Adam. Um, Ian, it's three times longer than Hyper Hyperglide. Yeah. That's the that's the Shimano where yeah, that's the what link, they indicate. The, so that's the link glides, the link glide drive chain on there. But also how long is a piece of string? Half, where, to, half twice its length, right? Where do you ride? How heavy you loads of loads of different things. Uh, maintenance as well. Next big part of that. Ig, me, what? Maintenance. Nick? Can you translate that? Maintenance? Yeah, ma maintenance. Uh, next question is from Lozzy E. Thanks for the interview, Steve. What was the bike? Levo, I think, right? Yes, it was a uh, specialized Levo in that particular video. But did you see that Yannick Pontal was actually riding a transition in the first uh, E Indira World Cup race? Yeah. I, look, it looks like it looked like a bros motor, but obviously he's a black box SRAM rider. There's been lots of gossip about the SRAM motor. It's got to be a new SRAM motor in that transition bike, which means probably in a few weeks' time we're going to be seeing transition bikes and Eurobike with SRAM motors. I would be very, very interested to see that. And to be honest, yeah, black box is that's that's the job of black box, isn't it? It's just a black box, dude. It's hidden. No one needs to know. <laughs> So not only have we been trying to ride cool places, you obviously all have. So you guys have sent in some of your amazing photos and again, getting us really, really jealous, but we are lucky it's getting into summer. So first and foremost, we have Carl, who has a wonderful Scott Patron Ultimate. Where are you reckoning that is? I love a bit of Patron, do you? Yeah. A bit of Patron. Patron, oh. Like, yeah, like a bit of Patron, patron yes. Uh, I love a bit of pad Patron. Nick, do you? Love it. Yeah, I love it, love, loving it, loving it, Good loving it. Good stuff. Uh, yeah, beautiful spot that, isn't it? This, yeah. this, you see, this is my cup of tea. I like it, I like it. Swedish gold, Swedish gold with the yellow bike. But and it's in Scotland. Yeah, again, you can tell it's Scotland straight away. You don't even have to. Ballater Ridge. Beautiful. Do you want to go click them or shall I click you can, them? Yeah, please. You, you're right. doing such a I'll good do, job so I'll, far. I'll do the manual labour in oh, this show. This is on the, the other side of the world. This is uh, this is to our Australian uh, Australian friends out there. Howard. Yeah. Look at him. I blue, like the beach. Blue bike, blue beach. Well, blue water, not blue yeah. beach. That's some balconies on, isn't it? Yeah, I was going to say, if that's his house. Howard will be over there to get on the Patron. Let's do it. Let's do it. Send me a message. <laughs> so, the big question this week, and something that I think is a quite interesting question. It kind of adds an interesting element, and it's always talking about price, which I love. So, the big question for you guys this week is do you ride an e mountain bike from a lesser known brand? Zundap. Zundap. Or do you have an Ananananda motor? Um, if so, what is it? And what did you pay and what are your thoughts on it? Do you believe it's better value for money rather than being, say, one of the bigger brands? Super keen to hear about it. Leave your comments down below and we will tackle those next week.
Okay, we're in the bike vault. We're in, we're deep inside the bike vault. One and we have found Dez. The rainbow. Dez on his wonderful KTM Machina? Yeah, a, a Kappa Ho 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 Master 2021. And the old yeah. Canuck Chase. That's not Canuck. It doesn't Get look like. Get out of town. That looks. That, that looks is not Canuck Chase. It's a super nice shot. Uh, next up, this is, I mean, that's Canuck Chase, but no, yeah. this is North Carolina. No, that's, a, that's a Santa Cruz heckler, not Canuck Chase. Oh, okay, this is Fred. <laughs> Freddy! Freddy, what we're saying, nice or super nice? It's a nice shot. Uh, and next up, this is definitely not Canuck Chase. This no. is Mike and D Mike. This, this is yours. Yes, this is MX yours. Core 3. Oh, it's super nice, I love it. That color, that bike. I mean, it's a bit foggy, but Fog. very patriotic. You've got yeah. the US flag in the background there. Ooh. Oh, Bluebell shots! Clent Hills, Birmingham, that was some great dirt jumps in Clent Hills. Robert and the Vitus E Summit, that's a super nice shot. And that's the end of the bike farm, I'm afraid. Well, send in more. And finally, some social posts. Uh, first up, it was nice to see Warner rattling on about his new giant e bike, as he does. But uh, yeah, nice to see him in some different colour clothing in this Instagram post. He can um, also talk. Probably as much, if not more, than you, right? Oh no, he can talk way, well, way <laughs> another another level of chatting. Even chatting more than you. That's impressive. Uh, and did you see Chris? It was nice to see Chris Smith, yeah. uh, former EMBM presenter, sliding down that slab which he'd been trying to tackle for many years. Yeah, on his I, new high bike. Seems I feel to be... like it's a right of passage. I'm going to have to go there, aren't I? And slide down the hill myself. <laughs> give, give him a call. Give him a call. But uh, last but not least, we have the wonderful and talented Phoebe Gale riding, or manually even better, her e-bike. What do you reckon to that, Steve? I can't manual an e-bike, I can wheelie an e-bike, but yeah. She does She does it even just to, to, to make you feel even worse. She's just doing it, no feet. There you go, there you Easy go. Easy enough. Uh, yeah, some great uh, bit of uh, news there, folks. Uh, and that's it for this week's EMBN show. That is a wrap, as it were. Zunda. So where's Leave your SL kids. Where's my surprise cake? I want my birthday cake, Steve. That was the surprise. Oh no, it was the kids' Levo, damn it. Oh. Oh, it's not your birthday, is it? No, 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 not yet. In time, don't worry. Folks, let us know what you think about the Levo SL kids, the Zunda bike, uh, and also what you think. Were we being, being a bit harsh about Narika? I don't... Were we being harsh? Let us know in the comments, and we'll tackle them next week, where Adam might have his fifth sitting. <laughs>